The RTX 4090 from NVIDIA is unquestionably the best graphics card. However, you need subjectively consider the benefits and drawbacks of investing $1,600 or more on a single GPU. Not everyone will enjoy it. To determine the best card at various price points, we examine every new GPU from the stables of NVIDIA, AMD, and now Intel. You might be surprised by the outcomes. You have a wide selection of new cards to choose from if you're a high-end gamer. The RTX 4090, the flagship model in NVIDIA's RTX 40 series, is a beast of epic proportions. It's enormous, I promise. The RTX 4080 is a touch too expensive for us, and the RTX 4070 Ti is also an option. Although the RTX 4070 Ti isn't as inexpensive as we'd like, it is still more affordable than NVIDIA's best for a card that is perfectly capable of 4K. The top 5 graphics cards for 2023 are shown in this video. Number 5. GeForce RTX 4070 Ti from NVIDIA The RTX 4080 12GB's deactivation, rebranding, and subsequent price increase were the nicest things that could have happened to this inferior ADA GPU. This card, which will hereafter be referred to as the RTX 4070 Ti, renders AMD's RX 7900 XT obsolete. The RTX 4070 Ti is frequently equal to or quicker than an RTX 3090, which is arguably its most impressive quality. When compared to the $1,500 GPU from the previous generation, especially at the highest 4K resolution, this appears to be a significant generation on generation performance increase. What's somewhat less fascinating is that it's not significantly faster than the older, less expensive RTX 30E 10GB at 4K when you're simply talking straight rasterized gaming terms. It is faster, especially when third-generation RT cores are taken into account, but it is obvious that the higher clocks and larger L2 cache are working very hard to give it the advantage over the previous Ampere card in terms of raw frame rates. When compared to the new AMD RDNA 3 cards, the RX 7900 XTX and RX 7900 XT, it appears much more promising. Although it is typically slower than the fastest Radeon GPU, the RTX 4070 Ti frequently outperforms the RX 7900 XT, which is still more expensive. The RTX 4070 Ti is a highly respectable performer even without any of the DLSS 3 slash frame gen features, but once again, the power of Nvidia's upscaling technology is absurdly good. Though I keep trying, I can't figure out where the frame generation technique fails. I always think, aha, there it is the telltale artifact of fake airframes. I then look at the native rendering and it appears to be identical, or much worse. Number 4. Radeon RX 7900 XT from AMD The Navi 31 GPU used in AMD's Radeon RX 7900 XT and the company's top graphics card, the RX 7900 XTX, have had their backs slightly shortened. With a starting price of $899 and a current price below $800, it provides a slightly more affordable entry point into the RDNA 3 generation, albeit you might mistakenly believe that it isn't all that much less expensive than the best. At $999, the RX 7900 XTX is enticingly affordable. Why then would you choose the less expensive chip out of the two? It's an excellent question, but other than the price, I'm not sure I have a suitable one. In every benchmark I ran, the RX 7900 XT performs better than AMD's previous top card, the RX 6950 XT, and by a significant margin. It's a source of pride for the RX 7900 XT that the RX 6950 XT, which originally cost over $1,000, is now selling for roughly $800, possibly even less. There are a few situations in which the performance difference between the XT and XTX is essentially non-existent. Additionally, the XT runs significantly more quietly and efficiently than the other. With the higher-end XTX card, though, you typically get what you pay for, if not a little bit more. Number 3. Radeon RX 7900 XTX from AMD Under load, there was a problem with GPU hotspot temperatures surpassing the typical predicted range in our evaluation RX 7900 XTX sample. Subsequently, then we've been in touch with AMD concerning a replacement for the retesting, which we've subsequently gotten. But regrettably, the same problem has reared its ugly head once more. Fun, A. You can read our reviews of the Sapphire Nitro Plus RX 7900 XTX Vapor X and the Asus TUF Gaming Radeon RX 7900 XTX OC Edition, which are completely unaffected by the problem and better illustrate the performance you can anticipate from this card's specifications. Nevertheless, there are many advantages to the AMD Radeon RX 7900 XTX. 
GPU generations frequently feature fewer processed nodes, revised designs, bigger caches, updated shaders, greater memory, and a long list of other improvements. However, all of that at once, the entirety in one fell sweep is what RDNA 3 offers. When purchased for its initial $999 price, the RX 7900 XTX is an excellent 4K GPU. It is the market leader in its niche and provides a considerable performance improvement over RDNA 2's in the $1,100 ARX 6950 XT or $999 ARX 6900 XT. It costs money, but isn't any more expensive than the card it replaces. Number 2. GearForce RTX 4080 from NVIDIA The NVIDIA RTX 4080 is a comparably quick graphics card that at $1,200 absolutely should be, and when you include it in DLSS 3, you get around twice the performance of the analogously priced RTX 3080 Ti from the previous generation. Frame generation is true dark magic. However, assessing the RTX 4080 is more difficult than managing Gen Sun's spatulas. Even though it's much simpler today, there is only a 16GB version, and it doesn't have a second 12GB half-breed following it about. It's not a good look for both of the major GPU manufacturers to announce their next-generation graphics cards with a starting price of, at best, $900 during a period of significant economic trouble and uncertainty worldwide. There will be debates that the $1,200 RTX 4080 is an unquestionable triumph because of its superior performance to the RTX 3080 Ti. But I also have some ideas about that. The RTX 4080 easily surpasses comparable older generation cards, most notably the $1,200 RTX 38 Ti, and so delivers the coveted generation to generation performance boost. However, neither of these GeForce GPUs belong as a $1,200 GPU. When compared to the AD102 chip of the RTX 4090, Nvidia has significantly reduced the silicon in the AD103 GPU. Generally speaking, it is 75% less expensive than the RTX 4090 despite being 60% smaller, having 60% more transistors, and having 60% more CUDA cores. The RTX 4080 should truly cost roughly $960 if you wanted to do some easy math. NVIDIA, however, remained shackled to this price even after it unveiled the more affordable 12GB card. This was because of the unsuccessful decision to debut with a pair of RTX 4080 cards, at $1,200 and $899, respectively, with differing levels of memory and completely distinct GPUs. Number 1. The GeForce RTX 4090 from NVIDIA NVIDIA's GeForce RTX 4090 graphics card is overtly aggressive. While there are some additional curves added to what may otherwise look like a respin of the RTX 3090 shroud, it still has that novelty graphics card style. It's a huge, enormous lump of a pixel pusher. It appears to be some sort of plastic mockery designed to poke fun at GPU manufacturers for making cards that are getting bigger and bigger. The RTX 40 series GPU generations Vanguard and our first look at the new Ada Lovelace architecture, however, make it neither a model nor the moon. On the one hand, it's a fantastic introduction to the kind of extreme performance Ada can produce when given a lot of freedom. And on the other, it feels like a slightly toned def release in the context of the current economic crisis to introduce a graphics card to a small but affluent segment of the gaming market. But we can't disregard it for this list of the top GPUs because, as of right now, there isn't a single GPU that can match the performance of the RTX 4090. Given that we now know AMD's highest performance graphics card, the RX 7900 XTX is unquestionably an RTX 40E contender, it is unstoppable and will continue to lead the pack. This enormous GPU has 170% more transistors than the RTX 3090 Ti's impossible chunk GA 102 processor. Additionally, it generally makes the previous Ampere generation flagship card look far behind. That's even before you consider the latest DLSS 3.0 revision, which is only for Ada, with its equal parts majesty and dark magic. Do you like it? Kindly give your valuable response in our comment section below and don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more interesting and informative videos.